If you missed this program last week, you really missed some life-saving nuggets on hepatitis by Dr. Rufina Igete. But not to worry, here's the good news. You can still access it on this YouTube page, that is, at Konga TV on YouTube. Such a grave issue as hepatitis capable of wiping out over 3,500 lives on a daily. Infected over 304 million people and attracted the World Health Organization to setting aside every 28th of July for awareness campaign, you'll agree with me, can't be pushed aside. So, I welcome you to yet another intriguing episode of Talking Health with Bumi. Thanks for keeping the date with me. Continuing where we stopped the last time with Dr. Rufina Igeti. Oh, let me quickly introduce who Dr. Igeti is to you. Dr. Rufina Igeti is a gastroenterologist with the Lagos State University College of Medicine. She's an author and has contributed to research topics on hepatitis B and C. Also, she has contributed to the research on hepatocellular carcinoma occurring at an earlier age in Africans, particularly in association with chronic hepatitis B. So in conclusion, let's go meet her. There are different kinds of uh, hepatitis and how to contact it, right? So what are the prevention methods as a medical practitioner that you will advise? Okay. Yeah. So, um, for hepatitis A and hepatitis B, E viruses, taking care of environmental hygiene, good sewage disposal, ensuring there is possible water, and that food and drinks are safely prepared. And the reporting cases, those are means of preventing those infections. For hepatitis A, there are also vaccines that can help to prepare prevent such infections, especially for persons who are traveling from places where it is the infection is not so common to places where the infection is common and they're likely to come down with such infections. Now, there's certain food um, items that could get heavily contaminated with hepatitis A and E virus. And um, these are seafood like shellfish. So those who eat such delicacies should make sure that they are well prepared and well cooked. Um, at least with those measures, to a large extent, you could prevent the transmission of hepatitis A and hepatitis B virus. Now, hepatitis B, I'm going to talk alone to hepatitis B. Because whatever I will say for hepatitis B, we cover for hepatitis B. Hepatitis D infection can only happen in persons who have hepatitis B virus infection. Okay. So if we are able to eradicate hepatitis B virus infection, we we'll equally eradicate hepatitis B virus. Now for hepatitis B virus infection, all those practices I mentioned earlier, you know, those who have a habit of sharing sharp objects with other people, not only in their homes, or maybe when they visit salons and then um, other places where they actually use those kind of sharp instruments, they should endeavor to have their own personal um, equipment. Tools. And mm -hmm. I will talk about things like hair clipper, for example, mm -hmm. or your manicure set, pedicure yes. set. Um, those who still go around piercing holes, at least you use single use. Uh, needles for all those processes and then um, also those who still go on to sew weave on attachment and all that they should make sure it is needle and not something that is shared um those who are usually impatient to go and queue at the hospital when they fall sick and would rather go for a quick injection at the chemist they should be careful because they could be expose themselves to be treated by quack and they could get hepatitis B. Gone are the days when blood transfusion was carried out without proper cross-matching and um, 
proper screening. Now it is mandatory to screen every blood and blood products, even persons who are going to donate any form of tissue for hepatitis B before it is done. And then that makes all those procedures very safe. Now, for a large population like us, I mentioned earlier that the infection rate here is hyper endemic. And when we started noticing that we have so many people who are coming down with liver failure, liver cirrhosis, liver cancer, all because of hepatitis B virus infection, we decided to do what has been done in Taiwan. And what did they do? They decided, since, like I said earlier, that most of the infections that will lead to these chronic illnesses will happen earlier when those children are still very small and the immune system is not so developed. And, it, and it's dumb, it's, 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 just, it's just there, you know, and they're, they're not aware of it. They're not aware of it until wow. it has done terrible damage, irreparable damage. Wow. So at that stage, what they decided to do was to make it compulsory to immunize every newborn child. Now in Nigeria, we've started that program. Hepatitis B virus uh, vaccine has been included as part of the routine vaccine children get during the vaccination period, during their first year of life. They get the first dose at birth, and then the remaining two doses, uh, two doses are distributed throughout mm. the vaccine period. So it is up to each parent now to take it upon themselves to check and be sure that Every child gets three doses of the hepatitis B vaccine. Okay. Because like I said, when the mother is not infected, what about other peers, other playmates who could be mm. infected? And we don't want them to have that infection in childhood. So that, and it is for free. They are not paying for it. Oh, okay, doctor, as you were just talking, something struck me. When you talk about even for blood, every blood gets screened or vitamin, I mean, hepatitis B and all that, you know, and I'm, I'm wondering, doesn't it have a gestation period uh, whereby maybe it's still at the very preliminary stage that is not, is it not possible that um, the, the screening doesn't detect that? When, um, at the time, um the infection manifests in the bloodstream mm. is the particular antigen that is targeted for screening is already present in the blood i see okay so that clears my fears it's detectable okay it's only in a very very rare case it's not because the infection is not mature enough that it may escape detection but very very low and at that stage the transmit—I mean, it will not be easily transmitted through mm. that uh, means. Okay. So I would say that cleaning of blood products is still an effective way of ensuring that the um, infection is not transmitted. Also. Terrific. Then I also caught something. I also caught something you said because I know that in every drug medications will take you we, we have these leaflets some are so large that you are wondering whether they want you to write an exam and they're so tiny they're so tiny but on every of them almost every at least those that i've seen so far they have contraindications so what are the possible contraindications for hepatitis um, um, injection or treatment generally uh, well, for hepatitis um, infection, there is no contraindication per se, except that for hepatitis B treatment, there are particular stages where the available drugs are effective. Oh, okay. Yes. And one thing about hepatitis B, some people don't want to hear it. It cannot be cured, but you can reduce the viral load to a safe level that you are as good as not having the infection. So is as bad, even HIV, has been, they've been able to, you people, the doctor, the medical world, has been able to find solutions to HIV, AIDS, how come hepatitis got... It is, it is, it is. Because what has happened in the HIV world is just that. 
What you have done is that is to suppress the viral load so that it is no longer detected in the blood. And once it's not detected in the blood, it's not able to do the damage that is expected of the virus. So why can't the same be done of hepatitis? But hepatitis C is curable. Hepatitis C is curable. And the reason okay. why I'm emphasizing this is that sometimes when you place persons on treatment for hepatitis C, and they hear that the virus is on, no longer detectable in the bloodstream, they misinterpret that for a cure, and they stop coming for follow-up. I see. Monitoring. So we want everybody to know that it's true we can suppress the virus and reduce it to zero in the bloodstream, but that does not totally, I mean, does not mean total cure. Mm. Because the virus in the liver and the particles in the liver can get reactivated and cause another set of infection. But I do know that when we do liver liver surgery, you you know you know it better. You know, liver have uh, reliably been told that it can regrow. So can the part where that is affected be taken out? And then it will grow back. Is that, is, that not, is that not an option? I just mentioned that the liver is just a site for the hepatitis virus to multiply and reside. Okay. It's actually making use of the liver cells as its home. It takes charge of any liver cell it infects. So it doesn't wow. go for a particular location in the liver. It is oh. widespread for the liver. Oh, horrible. <laughs> so, uh, uh, unless you take out the entire liver, which oh my, um, if you're able to suppress um, the production of the virus of the hepatitis virus from the liver, I uh, most of the damage that is caused will be minimal because it is the body response to the presence of the virus that actually causes liver damage. Hmm. Hmm. The virus is looking for a home, but mm -hmm. then the body's immune system detects an enemy, a stranger in that place, and mm -hmm. wants to get rid of that enemy. In terms of this, so it destroys the liver cell. That's what happens. Okay, doctor, thank you so much. Um, let's quickly take a short break. We'll be right back. I am the life. The pure many wish they were. I define what premium means to most and still define me. Every royalty asks of me. Dignitaries drink me with no question. I am not loud so you won't find me in traffic. Seated at momentous ceremonies, luxurious events and premium parties only. I am exclusive. With an unmissable presence in over 40 countries, I am global. I am the life of every occasion and gathering. I am Nestle Pure Life. Without any introduction, I am the life of the party. Welcome back. Okay, I know that in this climb, we have a lot of myths about almost everything. You have been in this field for decades, right? What are some myths that you have come across, uh, you know, in relation to hepatitis? I, I, I would say I've come across myths as such. More than okay. anything is um, lack of knowledge or misunderstanding about what hepatitis is and then what causes hepatitis. And sometimes when you try to explain, especially when it's hepatitis B or C, some people become, they feel guilty. But really, I don't think from what I've explained, mm. is if people want to be guilty about because sometimes you may not even know how the infection has come about. But mm. sometimes they ask, they ask, so how do you think I got mine? It's very hard for me to answer, I don't know how especially if nobody in your family has that infection but mm -hmm. where you have persons who have been infected previously in the family then you can't trace it to some perhaps 
somebody in the family who had it and then other people acquired the infection from that stuff. Would you say that government is actually doing enough um, enlightenment, education about hepatitis, seeing how serious the, this disease is? Yes, um, we are looking at, at it. For me, um, first of all, um, like you said, awareness on days like that, because of course that is why a day was set aside to celebrate World Hepatitis Day. And precisely with this year's theme, which is, it's time for action. That's right. I can that a lot of noise or many things will have happened, not only um, in the, I mean, not only on our TV, radio station, but even social media, because that's where everybody is this day. That's right. Everybody is there. Mm -hmm. so, government also would have also keyed into that. Um, not only government, individuals, professionals, those of us who um, actually um, have that experience of going through the pains um, with our patients, you know, uh, seeing how devastated, you know, they come in, you know, when they have um, the illness and the complications. Of course, we should be in the front line along with the government. Um, like you said, it was a weekend, so it looked like it was a bit quiet and nothing much happened. But a lot more is still happening. I know that in institutions, it's been happening in the Nigeria. There have been many screening programs for hepatitis, free screening programs, and a lot of enlightenment, also in the hospital settings, you know, going on. But like you said, for the government, I expected a lot more actually to have happened. And if not anything, at least the Minister for Health, the various commissioners for health, yes, yes. actually have done something to mark that day in the various states and even Absolutely. in the various local governments. That's to right. It down to the grassroots. Yes, a lot of propaganda, health talks, look for professionals who can give those talks. And um, I would also say that uh, these days, I'm not sure how much of biology and um, health science, health education is included in the curriculum these days. In fact, many young girls are so ignorant about it. Let's talk of how it is transmitted or acquired. I just mentioned this issue of some mothers not even knowing their status. That's why having been screened several times for an infection. Each time you go for antenatal care. So it can tell you how disconnected, you know, and dissociated people can be from things as serious as this. And you can imagine if a mother is positive, it means that all her children are at risk of getting this. That's sad. So I think we should do a lot also with teenagers, teenage girls, and then also people to school. Okay, now I want to ask. Can anybody just wake up at any time, at any point in time, and say, I want to go and check if I'm hepatitis free? Is it that easy? Yes, the tests are available in the laboratories, yes. Some laboratories will not, will not carry, on, carry out tests. Some good laboratories that I know, except it is you have doctor's um, direction or directive or notes. If, if, the, if the test centers are, uh, you know, independent of hospitals. Yes, you are correct. You are correct. But I know that there are some health check, um, health check programs now that have included okay. screening for viral hepatitis, mm. you know, routine medical checks. And um, since we started this program and raising awareness throughout the years, we've had many references from people who have gone for marriage counseling Okay. Because churches, institutions have included screening for viral hepatitis as part of the premarital screening processes. Terrific. So we have people coming through that. Then pre-employment. Great. Pre Good. So those are other routes where we find people who come in because they have gone for routine screening. Okay. And there's so many people. And then, of course, relatives of infected persons because they go home of course you, you need to ask them to ask their family members to go for screening you know in case Great. Are others are still infected and are yet to be detected 
So we still go through those means to um, raise awareness and to get people free. But I think in our environment, like I said, where we are, each person on her own should go for screening because of the high infection rate. And if you are negative, take the vaccine to protect yourself. Okay. But we do this. So we encourage anybody who works in any healthcare and um, giving institution, you know, to go for routine screening, whether they are doctors, they are laboratory workers in the hospital, or they are cleaners, whatever it is, or work you have to do in any hospital and in charge of taking care of patients. Mm. Please go for screening if you are negative, get the vaccine to protect yourself because they are at risk. Some mm. patients who have not been detected previously to come in and you could get in contact with their mm. partner, needle prick, injury, or whatever. So oh my. those are at risk. Dr. Rufina, it's really scary. Now, I, I have loads of questions that I would naturally want to ask you. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time. Okay, because we're particular about lifestyle, you know, you know, Nigerians are very dynamic and fashionable and lifestyle oriented people. So what kind of dietary and lifestyle changes would you recommend for someone living with hepatitis? It is it is it's dual. My question is dual actually. With for someone living with hepatitis already and for someone who wants to avoid hepatitis. What kind of dietary and lifestyle changes would you recommend? Okay. Normal diet, balanced diet, okay. regular exercise, okay. and no alcohol. Mm. Some people say alcohol keeps their hearts beating. <laughs> I don't know how true is that, but they say it keeps heart beating. It helps their hearts. If you go to the books and if you go online, they will tell you there is a limit of um, safe limit of alcohol you can take. Mm -hmm. But some in some people, even that safe limit may not be safe. Now, if you're already done with hepatitis and you're adding alcohol to that, you are causing more injury to your liver. So stay away from alcohol. Eat normal food, balanced diet. Don't exaggerate on any kind of food. All kinds of food are good enough. And don't eat too much so that you don't get this. And then do regular exercise as your body can. Thomas Brown once said that death is the cure for all diseases. But I say, don't bring it upon yourself. Remember, the hepatitis virus can be dormant from childhood to adulthood. So do well to get your newborn immunized against it. Warn your words not to play rough with someone with open wounds in their schools or neighborhood. And if you're once diagnosed, particularly of hepatitis B variant, don't give up checks thinking you're healed. There is no cure for hepatitis B. Health ministries, please do well to increase awareness on this disease. And that is how I draw the curtains on today's edition of Talking Health with Bumi. Thanks for sticking around. For comments, questions, and inquiries, please do not hesitate to call the number scrolling or connect with us via any of our social media handles. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Until next time, when I shall be bringing you another must-know issue, Think Health Matters. Think Talking Health with Bumi. Bye.